All right, welcome back. This is part two of a two-part series. Um, you might want to catch the first part that's called Maya Ocean Shader Part 1. Uh, this is going to be tutorial number two for uh, the Maya Ocean Shader, so let's get started. Um, this is kind of where we left off. Um, you can see where the water, I have a certain level of transparency set in here. So I'm looking at that thinking maybe I want to just do a little less transparency. So I'm going to come, come back on the transparency, do another render, and we're going to see, uh, it's a little more like it. I don't want to see a whole bunch of the object. Um, I want it to look more like water. So I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Um, let's see here. Let's do a quick render. And that is about what I want. So I'm going to work with that. At the moment, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to minimize the render view. And if I go down here into the timeline and I'm going to click play, the settings that I have set up right now just kind of have an easy going water here. And as you can see, I have a stationary sphere. But what we want to do is assign a locator to this sphere so that it actually interacts with the water. So it's real easy to do. What we're going to do is go back to the very beginning of the animation. And we're in this time, we're fluid effects. We're going to come down to ocean right here. And we are going to float a selected object. Now, first, what we have to do is make sure that we have the right object selected. Uh, it, we definitely want to make sure that it is routed to this object. So now that we have the object selected, we'll go to fluid effects. And we're going to go to ocean. And we're going to float that selected object. And you'll see where it comes up here in the tabs with a locator. We've got the locator shape, and then we have the basic expression of how that's interacting with there. But for the moment, what we're interested in here is locator shape and these uh, attributes. So um, if I go ahead and just randomly play the um, timeline now, you can see where the object is now pretty much uh, floating and it's sort of reacting with the uh, with the water and there it is pretty basic now by default uh, the buoyancy is set to 0.5 and that basically 0.5 means that it's half in the water and half out the water so what uh, you can do is if you want to change the buoyancy say like this uh, was a ball that had some air in it um, and, and it would be sitting more above the water, you may want to bring the buoyancy up a little bit. And now if I play the animation, you can see where that's what's happening with it being uh, at a higher buoyancy level. So it's sitting on top of the water. Now, let's say that ball got waterlogged and has some water in the bottom. Uh, if you bring your buoyancy down below 0.5, let's say we go halfway about, well, about about 280 or whatever. Now if I play that, you can see where it's now going below the surface. It looks like it's a ball that has some been waterlogged. So that's the effect of buoyancy. Uh, very basic, very simple. Uh, this is an easy way to just create an object that um, sort of is in the water and reacting. So you can model anything and put it in the water and make it float. And uh, that's pretty cool. So anyway, you get the concept. Let's go on to something a little different here. Um, Let's create a different piece of geometry. Yeah, I'm going to go to my home view, maybe scroll in a little bit, and we're going to create a, uh, a cube. All right, just a simple cube. So we'll come in here, we'll create that cube, and let's make it look kind of like that. And just for kicks and grins, we'll move it over a little closer, a little closer to that sphere so we can see what's going on. Now, uh, we're going to do the same thing let's take a little bit different view let's uh, let's come over here like that sort of and let's play the animation you can see where it just looks like a brick sitting on the top of the water and we really don't want that so what we'll do is we're gonna attach uh, we're gonna make that object float as well so we'll go ahead and make sure we have a choose tool make sure we're selected on our object go to fluid effects we're going to go to Ocean and Float Selected Objects. Now you can see where the locator is. It's sitting on top of the water, and that's essentially where, where that's sitting. So we'll go back to the beginning of the animation, and we'll play that. And we'll see that its buoyancy is set at 0.5, which is right in the middle. Um, 
we'll go ahead and leave it there for the moment and um, it doesn't look too good because it's basically a, a, a an object it should be moving around and being influenced more by the water so in order to get a little more realistic view of that let's add some keyframes um, so I'm gonna go back here and let's click on our object and make sure that that cube shape is as active and what I want to do is we're going to rotate and translate this a little bit. So I'm going to basically go to all of these values right here, shift click, highlight the top one, shift click, and all of these start out at zero. Um, we're going to sort of skew it a little bit to begin with. Um, we're going to rotate it. And what we're going to do is just sort of give it some, some rotation. So we'll start it out right there. Uh, put it on keyframe number one, or frame number one, and press the S on your key, keyboard and that'll set a frame, a starting frame for where it's going to start. And we'll bring it up here a little bit and let's move it around quite a bit as we go through this scene. So you can see where these stay highlighted up here and I'm just going to move this a little bit more over here and maybe down a little bit and hit S. And then that sets a keyframe. So now I'm going to move ahead a little bit and we're going to do the same thing, just sort of keep randomizing the motion that it's going through. So I'm going to put another keyframe there, and that's S. So bring it up here a little bit. We're going to move it and move it kind of down and around that way. And we'll put an S. Press S on the keyboard. That sets another keyframe. We're going to do this all the way through, um, just quickly kind of giving it some random motion. I'm going to hit S and bring it back a little bit and we'll make it float over this way, maybe go back a little this way, press S on the keyboard and you get another keyframe. So we'll bring it forward, bring it over a little bit, bring it back, S on the keyboard. So you get the idea. You're just going to want to go and, and randomize the motion of this quite a bit as it proceeds through this animation cycle of uh, say 500 frames. So We'll uh, sort of add some more keyframes there. And we're going to bring this down and bring this over that way. And to the very end, we'll add a couple more keyframes. I'm just going to bring it to there and hit. I'm going to kind of bring it back to the point where it sort of originally starts, just to see if it'll loop correctly. And press S on the keyboard to set that last frame. Now, what you can do is watch the animation and you can see by adding all those rotational uh, rotational effects on keyframing, now that object is is sort of uh, you know it's not really reacting correctly with the water. Uh, you may want to refine your your movements a little bit when you're working with something like this, but a little bit can go a long way. So that's basically the concept of uh, making things float. Um, and there you go. So let's take a look at something else here. Um, I'm going to scroll out a little bit. Right now we have default lighting, um, Maya's default lighting on, and so if I were to click the light up here, things look kind of strange. If I go into default quality rendering, they look strange again. So essentially, we need lights in this scene, um, or when we start adding lights, things are going to start looking a little funnier. But let's do this. For the moment, we didn't have any lights assigned, so let's create a light. I'm going to create a light, and in this case, let's create, say, maybe a, a point light. Um, that's just a, a nice diffuse kind of light we can do all sorts of stuff with. And let's bring it out here a little bit and bring it way up. And now we can come down here onto our object. Let's turn on that point light and see what's happening. So now you can see that we have that point light on. Let's take a quick render and see what our objects look like in there. So there they are. Um, that's with the point light on. Now if I turn the point light off, uh, let's go back here um, and let's make sure the point light is chosen. I can come over here and I can either lower the intensity a lot. Let's, let's say we take that intensity down quite a bit and now we can take another render. And actually we probably want to be closer in on our objects. And let's do a quick render. Okay, so it's a dramatically different um, look. Um, uh, well, basically, we'll we'll give that some more intensity. And let's see here. Let's do one more render. 
Let's see what see what that looks like. Okay, so we're kind of back to the beginning. With that point light on though, you can see it is affecting the shadow areas. And um, there's not much of a shadow area in here because the point light's sort of just a, an ambient type light and it's not really directional. So anyway, these are facing down at a different angle from that light. So of course they're gonna be a lot darker. So anyway, you can add lights to these scenes. You can add lights to um, light up the ocean and, and have reflection values. So let's play around with some other stuff at the moment. Um, let's go and, and maybe change the color of that point light a little bit. You can see where just changing the color you can pretty drastically affect an environment as well. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the, the white. I'll accept that. So that's what happens with lights. If I turn that light off, now we're just gonna be looking at Maya's default view and, uh, and that's it. So. So that's the concept, basically, um, of using um, floating objects. Uh, it's fairly basic, and you can animate these in the water like you saw that we did with the cube here. And it's just kind of a good concept to know. So you can create text and put it in the water or any kind of geometry, and you can make it float. So we'll be doing some more tutorials on some of these different options uh, later um, with the ocean where we can actually uh, we can make boats so we can actually have a wake and some other things moving across like if we make this into something that moves we'd make it into a boat um, and yeah make motor boats so we'll go over some of these uh, a little bit in some other tutorials so for now just get used to the concept of using uh, floating objects on the ocean shader so two cool things, uh, basic things in, in Maya you, you should know. All right, so thanks for watching, and I hope you had a good time and you learned something, and uh, now go and read a book, and uh, have a great day. All right, see you later.